The presentation tonight is called The Open Space in Orion. And we begin in the book of Job. One day, God gave Job a vision. Suddenly, he receives a telescopic view of the stellar heavens. He views immensities and glories that defy description. Even as he stands stunned and speechless, God turns to him and says, Now, Job, listen carefully to this question. Can thou bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades or lose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his seasons? Or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? These questions God posed to Job. And the question tonight is, why did God pose these questions to Job? Let's look at two or three of the questions. First of all, the first question, canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? As we look into the sky on a clear night, we see thousands and thousands of blazing, whirling, fast-moving stars. One of these stars is Arcturus. This star, by the way, it's a sun that's more than one million times as large as our own sun. To respect the size of Arcturus, it should be mentioned that our sun is one million three hundred thousand times as large as our planet. So is that a small star or a big star? Big star. Presently, Arcturus is rushing through our densely populated Milky Way at a tremendous rate of speed. In fact, it is the fastest moving first magnitude star in the heavens. Our sun is traveling at 12.5 miles per second. But Arcturus is speeding at the rate of 257 miles per second. Recently, when a rocket was shot beyond the moon, it was traveling at 29,000 miles per hour. But Arcturus, a mass more than one million times as big as our sun, is actually traveling at 925,000 miles per Per hour and it never loses speed so great is the speed of Arcturus that it together with his suns or planets is not held as a part of any astronomical system Arcturus is actually called a runaway star and is now traveling through our densely populated Milky Way system of 200 billion suns after which it will continue on through space and enter another Milky Way system also populated with billions of suns. Just think of it. What a catastrophe it would be if it should collide with another sun. Here is a picture of Schutum Sobieski. You can see how densely populated that, that is. Should Arcturus pass through this nebula, will it collide with one of these gigantic suns? Imagine the explosion that would result should this runaway star with its enormous speed and mass collide with another sun. Here's a polymer scope picture of the cluster of Hercules. Notice again the density of suns in the center of this star system. Should Arcturus pass through Hercules, Will it collide with one of its suns? The answer is an emphatic no. Why not? For you see, the Bible tells us that God 
is guiding Arcturus. That's why he asked Job, can you do that? And of course the answer from Job would be what? No. And so God says, can you guide Arcturus with his sons? And now to establish his superiority, God makes that question. Now here is the point of this astronomical text that amazes me. It was uh, recently from the uh, Palomar scope. This scope actually can take pictures uh, about a hundred miles distance, can measure the, the edge of a straight pin. This telescope was the one used to actually discover how fast Arcturus was really traveling. Only recently did we know that it was a runaway star, a law unto itself, the fastest moving first magnitude star in all the heavens. We today had no way of discovering the secret without the use of these marvelous delicate instruments. And so think of it. Job had no way in this world 3,000 years ago at a time when there was no polymer scope to know this amazing fact except the master astronomer tell, told him. Think of it then. Doesn't this strengthen your faith in the veracity and dependability of the Word of God? Now here's a second question that God asked Job. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades? The Lord speaks of the sweet influences of the Pleiades because they're so beautiful. The Lord speaks of binding the Pleiades because it is a group of 250 stars. They're actually a group of stars. There they are, the Pleiades. There are 250 of them bound together in the sense that they're all traveling in exactly the same direction at exactly the same speed. We might compare the 250 of them to a flock of birds all flying together in formation at ex exactly the same speed to a common distant goal. Now the following key question. Is it unusual for a group of stars to be bound in this way? The answer is this. As a matter of fact, this is the only group of stars in all the heavens bound by this kingship. In every other group, the stars, while traveling around a common center, are all traveling independently at different speeds in different orbits. Can you tonight see the astronomical significance of the Lord's question when he asked Job, can you bind this with influence of the Pleiades? In other words, can you keep those 250 suns together? What would be the answer? No. So, how did the author of the book of Job, more than 3,000 years ago, without the use of the Palomar scope, understand the astronomical facts so well that he could write the significant, intelligent question? This would have been possible only if the master astronomer had told him. Now, let's look at the third question. This third question is found, of course, again in the book of Job. Canst thou bind the sweet influence of the Pleiades and lose the one? The bands of Orion. Uh, perhaps we can look at the constellation of Orion. Here it is. And if you ask what is the constellation, it is simply a figment of the imagination in which the ancients imagine that the bright stars which they could see formed a certain figure in the sky. To the Greeks, Orion was a great hunter who boasted that he could kill anything, but a small scorpion bit him on the heel and he died. So, Greek mythology is untrue, unscriptural, but can still be used as a valuable aid in helping us to locate the stars. Notice the three stars that make up Orion's belt. You see the belt right there? Okay. Now I should tell you uh, something about this constellation. 
It is a constellation that can be seen from the North Pole, from the South Pole, from any place on the globe. Unlike the Southern Cross that only the people in the South can see, or the North Star that only the people in the North can see, Orion can be seen from any place on the Earth. Now, let's take a closer look. Here's that uh, constellation picture of Orion. And uh, the belt band. At nighttime, if you want to locate it, if it is a clear night, it actually looks in the figure like uh, the kite. You have the three stars there, the star here, and then three stars down here. Can you see that? So that's the usual uh, configuration that you can see at night, and it's the easiest one to locate. Now, why did the Lord ask this question, and what does it mean? What's the answer? See, at the present time, scientists have discovered that the belt band uh, consists of an almost perfect straight line a row of three second magnitude stars. They're equally spaced, but these stars presently are moving and will approach each other and form a naked eye double. The third star will drift eastward so that the belt band will no longer exist. That's happening as we talk tonight. So presently, the belt band is being loosed. Unlike the Pleiades, no two of the stars of Orion are traveling in the same direction or at the same speed. They're just like a ship on a high sea passing each other tonight, traveling at different speeds, bound for different ports. 3,000 years ago, no one knew this fact except God. Only after three millenniums of research and study have astronomers unwittingly confirmed what God said to Job a long time ago. And it's written in the Bible. Herschel, one of the greatest of astronomers, said the following. All human discoveries seem to be made only for the purpose of confirming more strongly the truths that come from on high and are contained where? in the Bible. But say, there are some other most amazing truths in the nebula. I want you to notice Regal, the great sun located just above the knee. Okay, that's Regal. The great Regal while our sun is 1,300,000 times as large as our Earth, this star is 14,000 times as bright as our sun. Then there's Betelgeuse. Pronounced Betelgeuse, spelled Beltagese. Betelgeuse, the gigantic star in the shoulder of Orion, while our Earth has a diameter of approximately 8,000 miles, Betelgeuse has a diameter of 260 million 